guys, Just Freckles back online again and today is the first day of the holidays which is super exciting except for the fact that it's super rainy outside so I'm kind of stuck in my house. So I was cleaning my room because it looks bad um, to say the least and then I found these like fake flowers in a mason jar and I was like well I can do something with it. So I did something with it so I'm going to be showing you guys how to make it so let's see what you'll need. So to do this DIY, you're going to need a few things. So you're going to need a mason jar, obviously. You can just use an old peanut butter jar or something. You just need to wash it out and take off the label and then like clean up any extra grossness. And then mason jar, basically. And then you can grab some tape. You can either use double-sided tape or normal tape. Just Normal tape is better because you don't really need double-sided tape. Some scissors. If you're left-handed, it would be useful to have left-handed scissors like I do. Then you're going to need a pen and some scrapbooking paper. I pre-decided which um, paper I was going to use because it took me a long time to decide. And then you're also going to need to you to grab what you're going to need to be cleaning the jar so i saw this hack online and it's like use lemon essential oil so that's what i did for this one and now it looks really clean and it also smells really good and i also just have a paper towel here to rub the lemon essential oil over with so i'm going to clean this mason jar and yeah <laughs> So it's time to clean the mason jar. So I feel like this step kind of needs some explaining with the lemon essential oil because that seems really random to some people. So there's like just a little residue of like glue that was like holding the label on. So that's kind of what I'm trying to clean off. So I basically just folded my paper towel into quarters and then I'm just gonna open the lemon essential oil. Let's see if I even can. Cause sometimes it's, okay, did it. And then you're just gonna drop a few drops that was a bit too much, onto your paper towel and then you're just gonna start scrubbing and it comes off fairly quickly and it's a bit harder with like hot glue, gun glue, but like my sister used to put like um, temporary tattoos on mason jars and it made it look cute, but then as the tattoo started to fade, it started looking kind of weird. So it's really easy to get off those as well and just like label marks and stuff like that. So I'm just going to keep scrubbing. So I've just kind of finished cleaning the mason jar. Basically what I did was I just kind of scrubbed and I figured that with doing hot glue gun like residue, it's easier to focus on one little clump of glue at a time and then from there like go to the next one. But it still can take quite a lot of time obviously if you did like a little like, I don't know, hot gluing buttons to a mason jar or something. That can take a really long time getting off all the hot glue. So if you guys have any cleaning hacks down in the comments below, that would be really much appreciated. And if I do another mason jar video DIY thing, I may end up using one of the cleaning hacks, especially if I run out of this. Um, but basically, yeah, I just did some scrubbing and then I just went around the whole jar, just kind of spreading it and also, it's really nice because lemon smells really good. I love the smell of lemon and it makes the mason jar smell really good. And like, I don't, I am not a big peanut butter fan, but my family loves peanut butter. So it kind of helps me to get rid of the peanut butter smell. And you can really do that with anything. So now basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my scrapbooking paper and then I'm just, I've pre-measured it so it's slightly smaller. So I'm. It's like this right like width to curve around the inside. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay it on the pattern side so I can kind of follow a line. And this is kind of risky if you're really bad at like drawing lines. And I may need to stand up for this, but I'm basically going to figure out where I want my paper to stop. And I'm gonna draw a line there. So I'm gonna stand up so I can see it properly. So if I go out of frame, I go out of frame. Okay, so like there's the bottom, like right there. So you're trying to make sure that when you're looking at it like from a bird's eye view, which is like straight down, the 
bottom of the bottle and the edge of the paper are meeting. And then you're just going to find the point you want to cut. And then you're going to leave a mark. So mine's like almost in the dead center. I'm just going to accentuate it a small bit. And then I'm going to do the cutting off camera because that way if I need to try again, I can try again. So, yeah. So I've just finished the cutting process. Um, this one was a pretty easy one to cut because it had very clear lines with the checker pattern and they were very thick lines. So it was easy for me to cut down in a line because I was following a certain line. So to get it into the jar, because I like putting it in the jar so you can kind of like, it has like a bit of a 3D effect, it's really cool. And also because it's like easier to do it in the inside because doing it through the outside it's just very like it's a lot more taping gluing and it can take a really long time so all you need to do is like roll it up without making many like any dents into the paper that keeps it in that shape and then you just like pop it into the jar and then you just find how even it looks because obviously if it's really uneven it will look bad um, and it'll just look very choppy whereas the goal with this is to try and get it straight so yeah and also with this pattern because it has clear lines you kind of need to make sure that you're overlining the lines so that they like match so now what you're going to do is you're just going to lie it on its side so that you can see the crease where they overlap and then you're going to grab your tape and then you are going to tape it in a way that it goes through it so it looks very natural on the side it was taped and then it just looks very clean. So again, the main points for this would be to, with a lined pattern, match up the lines so that it doesn't look completely like cut and like glued in there and it needs to look very clean. So now we're just going to go in and tape it. So lay it on its side, facing you, and then tape. I've just done some little extra pushes against the glass to make sure that it is 100% against the glass so that that way when we're putting things in and out of the jar because you can really put like buttons or anything in it um, it just looks like it's not like getting damaged and it can be in there for longer if it's more against the jar because then there's not things like breaking the top so that that gets really munted and ripped so we're gonna lie it on the side and then we're gonna draw one long piece of tape going down towards you guys. So, so now it's time for the most nerve wracking part, putting the tape in the mason jar. Cause obviously it's really hard to get your hand into the mason jar to put it in. And also if the tape like falls onto the paper when it's not supposed to, that can be like it. Like that can be the end of the paper and you may need to start all again. So my biggest tip to you guys is have a pen or pencil or something going in to like line it up and stick it down towards the bottom. And then any excess pieces that are like going up, you can like just snip off. And if it goes really diagonal, like I don't know if you guys can see, but mine went really diagonal there because I couldn't really see what I was doing. You can obviously just grab another piece of tape and put that in. So I'm just gonna fix up the tape in there and then we'll be back. So I've fixed the tape situation. And the really cool thing about doing this is it's not like real flowers will they'll like die and you don't need to water them. So it's really easy doing fake flowers. But if you want to risk your paper getting all dirty and mucky, you can 
put some real flowers in there, but I'd suggest that if you wanted to put real flowers in, it would be better to put the paper on the outside, which I may have to show you guys another time, but you can pretty much just use the same technique as I used for my DIY tins video, which I will put up there. No, up there. I think, yeah, up there, that corner, yes. So now we're just gonna put in the flowers. I put it, I cut my flowers to be more to size, but then they kept falling out, so I had to put a rubber band around them. So, um, yes, I am a genius. And then you just really need to like push them in. And obviously you want them kind of poking out so they look a bit more like freely grown, but also they kind of need to be stuffed in there so that they don't like fall out. So, oh, like, that looks so good. Maybe I can it like more that way. So it looks, yeah, that looks, yeah, that looks a lot better. So yeah, I really like these flowers. I think these flowers are really pretty. And I also really like the look of these two jars together. So I may need to go and find some more fake flowers um, and put some in either one of them. I don't really know which one I prefer these flowers in. I really like the look of them being like kind of rustic um, patterns just because it looks very like, I don't know how to describe it, but it's very pretty and I really love it. So if you guys like it too, make sure you leave a like so I know that you like it. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, remember to leave a like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell to get notified every single time I upload a video. Share this video with all of your friends and all of your family and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye from me and goodbye from every single one of my freckles. Bye.